Evening, Gert. Hello there, Marshall. We're live on YouTube already? We are, yes. I think they just want to make sure it was uh, going to work. <laughs> so <laughs> we get good. closer and closer to 6.30 as, as we go. <laughs> no kidding. And Gary, just to clarify, you're okay with me doing the announcement at the beginning? Absolutely. That's right. the right time to do it. That, yeah, was for sure. the, that was the idea by bringing that in with announcement. Perfect. It's exactly something like that. In our Zoom meetings, we were thinking about four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right. right. Uh, Gary, are, are you also going to uh, make announcements on, on the new hires for the city of Warren? Um. I, I will, you know what, we'll do that during round table. I, I was going to mention, um, I was going to mention uh, Katie. I was going to maybe wait until we have our economic development here and, uh, and wait for uh, Bob's report with that. Okay. Don't forget great. with uh, Catherine as well, it is in the city manager's report and there's the motion there appointing her. Right. But thanks for that. I... Well, it is 6.30. I'd like to call this meeting to order. I'd like to welcome you to the City of Mormon's regular meeting of council on this 25th day of January 2021. I now call this meeting to order. And we'll start out with announcements. And before, uh, before announcements, uh, I, I noticed that on my Facebook that uh, it's uh, one of the council's birthdays today. And uh, and in, in Warman, it's a big deal with birthdays. Uh, we, we give our uh, employees uh, special recognition during, uh, during their birthdays with time off. So uh, happy birthday, Mar uh, Councillor Seed. So I want to say that uh, Thank you. to start. And uh, other announcements. Councillor Seed. So uh, just a quick announcement. Um, I would like to extend a welcome and a greeting to uh, the grade three and uh, four class of Riverbend Colony. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Bayless is their instructor and uh, she will actually be sharing our council meeting, uh, going through it with the students as they pursue um, some information with their social studies related to governance and how decision-making uh, is done. So uh, they're very interested to see this. I'm sure they'll enjoy uh, everybody. Just give them a quick wave and a shout out and uh, certainly uh, look forward to hearing some follow-up questions as they've given me about 16 questions prior to this meeting. So I think their package is a little harder than the package that we're about to present, but we'll, uh, we'll get through it either way. So thank you. That's great. And wel welcome to our meeting. That's, that's great to see. And uh, knowing that some of the youth are following our meetings and have a chance. And that's a nice thing with them being on video, they can see different items and sort of follow them through even. Absolutely. So with that, we will, uh, a, a couple quick announcements. I'll mention that well, this is our first meeting with our uh, new uh, city clerk, and that is Katie Armstrong. And, and I know uh, we have a motion uh, with Katie coming later on in the meeting. Also uh, later on, uh, our one other one I want to mention is our youth, is Julian. Uh, we sort of lost them last meeting, and I, I just wanted to point them out. That Julian, welcome to the meeting. I know you uh, submitted a report, so we'll hear from you at that time and have a chance to ask you questions at that time. So welcome to both of you. And with that, we will move into our meeting and move down for a motion uh, to approve the agenda. Councillor Peterson. You're muted, Trevor. Sorry, um, I'd like to make the motion to approve the, the regular meeting of council agenda for Monday, January 25th, 2021, as presented. Seconder? Councillor Tooley? Any, any additions? Anything else? 
Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, we will move down to uh, minutes. Motion, please. Uh, Councilor Ramage. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to make the, a motion to adopt the minutes from the January 11th, 2021 regular meeting of council and the January 14th, 2021 special meeting of council as presented. Seconder for that. Uh, Councilor Johnson, any questions? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. We'll move down to admin reports. We'll start out with City Manager Smith. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, tonight I have three items and uh, which require four motions for Council's consideration. Uh, the first one is the Warman High School Truth and Reconciliation Mural. The Warman High School requested permission from the, uh, from the city to place a painted mural on the side of the building at the, that the city owns at 101 Clawson Street West, uh, which is the old library building. On September 25th of 2019, the request was submitted to City Council and approved subject to the city receiving an approved uh, concept drawing of the mural prior to it being painted and displayed on the building. On January 12th of this year, uh, City Administration did receive a letter and email from Sarah Gerard advising that they have now uh, prepared a concept plan and they're ready to move forward with the painting and placement of the mural. Okay, well, uh, in, in speaking with uh, Ray Keeley, uh, who is part of the project coordination, he advised that the mural would be on the north wall of the building and would be mounted uh, to the stucco with uh, deck screws. The mural will be placed on a support grid uh, using one by uh, four treated wood. And the recommendation is that uh, we approve the concept drawing. Okay, um, is there someone willing to put their name? Councillor Johnson. <clears throat> I would like to make the motion that council approve the concept drawing submitted by Warman High School and approve the placement of the Truth and Reconciliation mural on the north exterior wall of the building at 101 Clawson Street West as per the city manager's recommendation. Seconder for that, Councillor Peterson. Discussion. Any questions? Councillor Beck. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, well, this year, you know, certainly, um, you know, you know, with this whole, um, you know, uh, project and whatnot. Um, um, I, uh, quite honestly, I was, uh, let's say, under the understanding, or you know, I guess, uh, believing that this was actually going to be on the on the Route 11. Um, uh, you, you know, let's say uh, 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 building not actually on the rented part from where our chamber of commerce is. Um, so with this year, I'm just wondering, have we at all reached out to the chamber of commerce no noting that this is actually on, on the wall that's, that's rented out uh, by them? Um, you know, you know, cause you know, let's say like initially I was actually thinking that this mural was going to be uh, placed uh, facing East, not, uh, not North. So I, you know, I was just wondering on process on that and whether or not uh, we, whether or not there's been any discussion with the uh, with the chamber as to that placement. Manager Smith. Uh, well, earlier in the process, uh, the chamber was um, contacted and they gave approval to it. Um, it was um, uh, it, it has always been on to be on the north side of the building as far as I understand. And um, that was my error in the, uh, assuming that it was gonna be on the, on the east side. So it's always been on the, the north side uh, of the building. It is one building, uh, it's, not, it's not a separate building. Uh, it's, it's, it's all one and it's leased to two different, uh, two different entities. One being the chamber and the other being Route 11. Any, any other questions or follow up? Okay, hearing, okay, Councilor Beck. Yeah, um, you know, uh, certainly this year, like, you know, like I'm certainly willing to, you know, to adopt the motion. 
Um, I would just like to have, let's say, just that final reach out of, of coordination with, with the other tenant, that there's no issues uh, with that aspect of things. And as long as there's no, no issues or aspects there, then, then I'd certainly agree with this. Um, so, you know, so I guess that, that would be my comment. So I'm willing to support it, but I would also like to see that, that particular consultation, um, you know, just to make sure that, uh, that we're not going to have any tenant gr uh, grievance um, at some point here in the future. Okay, so I, we can reach out, I guess, and just make sure that was the understanding. If not, I think we, we, we'll, we'll find out where that broke down in the process because I, I agree that I, I think it was always supposed to be on the north, but we can go back to documentation if need be. But, uh, but I think reaching out to the chamber tomorrow just to making sure that everybody's on the same page. Okay, so anything else with that? So we'll have that happen, but we'll. But I think we still have the motion before us, and uh, I'll call the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay. Thank you, uh, Senior Manager Smith. Continue. Okay. My apologies for that. Um, the next item I have is the household hazardous waste days, and our. October 17th, the city did hold the sixth annual uh, Household Hazard Waste Day. The project coordinator was our office clerk, uh, Sarah Mann. Uh, she provided a report to council on the outcomes of the day, including how many vehicles, um, the hazardous products that were collected, and also the cost for the disposal of those products. Um, along with uh, Sarah's report, there were two items for council's consideration. Uh, one was product care, which currently runs the steward, uh, stewardship program, uh, are looking to partner with uh, municipalities for hazardous house household waste days in uh, 2021. We would host the event as normal and product care uh, would cover the cost of the disposal of the items that are in their program, only the ones that are in their program. Uh, we'd like to proceed with moving forward by advising product care that uh, the city of Worm would be interest, interested in partnering with uh, and in hosting our um, household hazardous waste day in 2021. Uh, so that's uh, one of the items. The other one, we also received an expression of interest uh, from the town of Osler to join our uh, waste days for 2021. Uh, we would coordinate and host uh, the household hazardous waste days as usual and the town of Osler would supply one or two volunteers as well as pay for their share of the net costs um, that would go along with that. Based on the conversation at the committee of the whole meeting, it would be recommended that for the first year, uh, we base the fees on the number of cars uh, as it would be very transparent and based on the best possible data available to ensure fairness to both uh, Osler and Warman. Now, the town of Osler has uh, only indicated an expression of interest. I wanna be clear on that, that they've not yet made a decision if they uh, will be joining us uh, or not, but uh, that they would uh, like the option if it's available. So I have uh, those two items for consideration. Okay, we'll start out with the product care one first. Uh, uh, Councillor Peterson. I'd like to make the motion that council provide direction to city administration to move forward in partnering with product care when hosting the 2021 ho household hazardous waste day as per the city manager's recommendations. Seconder for that. Councillor Johnson, any questions for that one? Uh, Councillor Seed. I just wanted to, to clarify uh, with Manager Smith, and, and I know that this is very much up in the air, but as part of discussion, uh, it is the understanding that product care holds to, and I understand they may not be, but uh, expanding into some of the other uh, items that we also recover at the hazardous waste days, such as the pesticides, toxics, flammable liquids, that of that nature, is that our understanding that they have the intention, obviously we can't hold them to that, but that is their intention that they'll be able to accept as much as reasonably possible within their program on the date of collection. Uh, as much as possible, we don't have a, a confirmed list right. uh, yet. I'm not sure if Councillor Johnson wants to uh, provide more information on that, uh, if, if she would. Okay, and Councillor Johnson and, and 
information and you had a question, go ahead. Yeah, there is a list of acceptable um, products that Product Care will accept. Uh, it is on their uh, website, productcare.org, um, aerosol cans, paint cans, oil, that kind of stuff. Um, as far as pesticides, I'm not 100% sure uh, with that, but if they're looking at expanding, but there is an accepted list on their website that we can take a look at for sure. Um, and then I just had a question as far as, um, do, has there been any other towns uh, that are expressing an interest in joining us with the Hazardous Waste Day and potentially with uh, uh, the uh, product care? We'll maybe save that question for the next motion. So uh, we'll just stay with the product care for now. And, and I think anything that product care or any like uh, SureCom does or any of these places that are helping us, it only helps the bottom line. So it, it is greatly appreciated. So. Uh, Councilor C. I, I did just want to clarify then, uh, just because it's not mentioned, but I believe it was in a previous meeting, uh, is that product care is not um, uh, giving us any fee for service for this. Is that correct? It, yes. What they will, my understanding of is they will, um, we would submit some of the uh, products that are on their list uh, and are what we collected and, and the amount and the cost and they will pick up some of that cost uh, on on behalf of the and submit it to the municipality that that fee. Perfect. Thanks for the clarification Thank there, Councillor Peterson. So, is Product Care here at, with us, running and helping doing the collecting, or is that still GFL, or are they the same company? No, it would still be GFL. The only thing that uh, we would not change our operation at all. All as product care would do is they would provide, they would help fund uh, some of the product that's on their list. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Beck. Yeah, uh, with this year, like this is just more of a comment. Uh, you know, certainly this year, product, you know, product care, like they're like they're almost like that intermediate source between, you know, let's say between us and GFL at this point. Um, you know, certainly with this year, with the Ministry of Environment, um, you know, let's say just kind of recognizing the cost of household hazardous waste. So, let's say trying to find a uh, reasonable, you know, let's say uh, a delivery model of 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 uh, supplying that service for municipalities. You know, that this that that's where this year really kind of stemmed from so uh, you know it's certainly great you know you know uh, knowing that product care is going to be certainly there to help us you know let's say assist with costs and also you know with the with the boss with the passing of the other motion to follow this you know it's certainly great you know you know let's say with us kind of being let's say that hub to other uh, you know regional partners so that there one event can service more than just one municipality any other questions or comments okay I'll call the question then all those in favor Opposed? It's carried. We will, uh, now we have a second motion. Uh, Councillor Beck. Yes, I'd like to make the motion that Council advise the Town of Ozer that we would welcome the opportunity to have their community as part of our Household Hazardous Waste Day, and that for the first year, we share the cost of hosting the event based on the percentage of vehicles dropping product off during the event as per our City Manager's recommendation. Seconder for that motion, Councillor Seed, and questions. And first of all, I'll give you uh, Councillor Johnson's question. Has any other uh, communities been invited or shown interest? Uh, so far, we haven't received any other interest from any other municipalities. That's not to say that there may not be in the future, but we also haven't reached out. Um, if, if communities are interested in joining us, we would certainly, uh, Take that into consideration bring it back to council for consideration but we also haven't been advertising it as well right and in capacity levels and and the way we do things would have to come into question there because i think i think some days when it's nice weather it's a fairly busy day yeah it, it is for sure and we don't want to have it'd be nice to host them all but also our residents uh we don't want to affect them very much either so it'll be a balance other questions with this motion? And I do like your comment about that it was the invite because in a lot of ways it, it will really come down. Does this make sense for them to be a part of it? And 
and how we're tracking it. Uh, Councillor Beck, you had something? Yeah, well, this year, like I was just wondering, um, you know, with with product care being involved in this, um, like, is there any possible, uh, let's say, uh, um, negotiation on, on the date that you know that we actually have secured with with GFL? I mean, like, I know with this year, I think we're the second or third week of October. Um, traditionally, is when we've had it. And I'm just wondering if there's any way to move that up a week or two. Um, you know, certainly this year, you know, I mean, like, I, you know, definitely the fall is a great time of year uh it just seems that uh sometimes things can get pretty chilly out there uh you know certainly uh you know serving all, all of those vehicles uh that's certainly something we can ask them again we ask them each year if we can uh move it a bit uh, ahead uh but they also have their uh schedule of you know, where they are in other municipalities as well, but we'll certainly reach out and, and see if there's an opportunity to move a couple of weeks ahead. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, uh, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. And my final item I have is I'm, uh, as mentioned at uh, the committee of the whole meeting uh, held on January 18th. Uh, the city is very pleased to have Catherine Armstrong join our team as city clerk for the city of Warman. Uh, in order to make the appointment official and as per section 85.1 of the Cities Act, uh, city council will be required to pass a resolution to that effect. Okay, motion please. Councillor Tooley. I'd like to make a motion that uh, council appoint Catherine Armstrong as the city clerk for the city of Warman in accordance with section 85, one of the city's act as per the city manager's recommendation. Seconder. Councillor Seed, uh, any questions? Or just more of a welcome, welcome Catherine. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay, we'll move down to finance. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I have three items for Council's consideration tonight. The first item is amendments to the Council indemnity policy. These changes include an addition of a definition section, as well as changes to administrative responsibility of the policy and redefining indemnity versus per diem throughout the policy. Within the remuneration of benefits section, please see an increase to the indemnity amount of 2% as approved by council. Administration wishes to thank council for their leadership with the decision to decline the 2% increase to per diem amounts for the 2021 year. In recognition of the challenges acknowledged in the 2021 operating budget during these uncertain times. The recommendation I have is that the council indemnity policy with the 2% increase to indemnity amounts, as well as administrative changes be approved at this regular meeting of council. Motion please. Councillor Johnson. All right, had to unmute. <clears throat> I'd like to make the motion that the council indemnity policy with the 2% increase to indemnity amounts as well as administrative changes be approved at this regular meeting of council as per the finance manager's recommendation. Seconder. Uh, Councillor Beck. Any questions? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. The next item I have is tax enforcement. Included in Appendix B is a tax enforcement, a property tax enforcement arrears listing. The properties listed have arrears balances of 50% or more at the time of the more of the 2020 levy. Tax enforcement on these properties will include mailing letters, advertising, advertising in the local paper, and posting a copy in the municipal office, as well as adding associated costs to municipal tax arrears accounts and applying tax liens to those properties still having remaining balances 60 days after the tax enforcement advertising and mailing process. The recommendation I have is that the tax arrears listing be approved at this regular meeting of council, allowing the city treasurer to place liens on those properties worth 50% or more of the 2020 levy in arrears. Motion, please. Councillor Seed. I'd like to uh, make a motion that the tax arrears listing, uh, Appendix B, be approved at this regular meeting of council, allowing the city treasurer to place liens 
on these properties with 50% or more of the 2020 levy in arrears as per the finance manager's recommendation. Seconder, Councillor Beck, any questions or comments? Councillor Beck. Yeah, oh, this year I just want to uh, check with our finance manager that this list is is, is accurate for uh, let's say the end of uh, today. Um, you know, this year, like I know that this was kind of posted up for us. Um, you know, let's say uh, towards the end of last week, and I just wanted to make sure that that anything else collected um, has certainly been adjusted for. Obviously, if there's been nothing received, then that, that would make this accurate. But I guess I just want to you know just just make uh, clarification that that this list is is actually right up to date. Yes, you bet. So the the um, uh, report had to go to council for upload to the package on uh, Thursday morning. So it was updated up to that date. We will check every property before we send letters as well, though, to see if there's any payments made even in between tonight and mailing of the letters. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, uh, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Oppose, carried. The last item I have is the 2020 operating and capital budgets. As presented to mayor and council, the city of Ormond special budget meeting on January 14th, 2021, please find attached a copy of the 2021 operating and capital budgets. The 2021 city of Ormond budget includes an overall tax increase of 1.6%, 1% which is allocated to supporting the capital equipment purchases and 0.6% towards the operating budget. Administration notes that the property tax bylaw will come forward once administration receives final assessment figures from SAMA, along with confirmation of the 2020 education mill rate. The recommendation I have tonight is that the 2020 budget be adopted by council effective January 1st, 2021 at this regular meeting of council. Motion, please. Councillor Beck. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make the motion that the 2021 budget consisting of 22,000, <clears throat> Uh, $22,130,181 in operating revenue, $17,150,421 for operating expenses, $1,909,804 for capital expenditures, $4,229,760 in transfers to allocated reserves, and $1,159,804 in transfers from allocated reserves. Be adopted by the Council effective January 1st, 2021, at this regular meeting of Council as per the Finance Manager's recommendation. Secretary for that? Uh, Councillor Tooley. Questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. We'll move down to planning. Manager Tove. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Philip Chuck, uh, members of council. A few items for discussion tonight. The first is a multi-unit tax incentive policy. Based on some discussions with council and the intent to try to stimulate more development of multi-unit purpose-built rentals, administration has drafted a policy. Details on the policy consist of the following. <clears throat> the policy will be in effect until 2030 or once 200 units of purpose-built rental are constructed, whichever comes first. Included in that will be a review or a report provided by administration after 100 units have been developed just on the successes uh, of, the, of the policy. The incentive applies to any land zoned appropriately for multi-unit development. It will be 100% municipal tax abatement and 100% school tax abatement up to a maximum of $25,000 uh, for five years. The incentive will kick in within 18 months of issuance of a development permit and last for five years. The units must remain as rental for the life of the incentive. Uh, we'll also have... Uh, Sorry, I've also included a, a copy of the policy as Appendix A for Council's information. Uh, we do have, or I've provided a few options for Council to consider moving forward and a recommendation that we move forward with adoption of the policy. <clears throat> Motion, please. Uh, Council Ramage. I'd like to make a motion that Council adopt policy P43-2021 multi-unit tax incentive policy as per the planning and developer, development manager's recommendation. Secretary for that motion. Councillor Peterson, any questions or comments? 
Again, I just want to comment how quickly this was done and, 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 and uh, thanks for the quick turnaround and implementing all the ideas that were coming about. So appreciate that with this. It, it should be a very good policy for stimulus in our community. So with that, I'll call the question then. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. The next item for discussion tonight is some corrections to our zoning map. Uh, one for 920 Centennial Boulevard, uh, the other for Southland Stage 5. Uh, administration did use a consultant to create a new zoning map that went away from the color coding and used letters and borders instead. As the city grew, the zoning became more complex. The color blobs were a little bit harder to track, uh, so the new format on the map made it much more user friendly. Unfortunately, through the creation of this map, the changes to the R3 zoning on the eastern portion of the Stonegate site was missed. Uh, in addition, there were some lots in Southland Stage 5, which should have been zoned RT2. Uh, initially, were zoned R2. Uh, in addition, uh, with the change to the Stonegate uh, portion of the zoning map, administration is also uh, requesting an update to the OCP future growth map, uh, just to make sure that the two documents are in line. So I provided for two recommendations for Council's consideration tonight. <clears throat> okay, motion, motion please. Councilor Peterson. I like to make the motion that council give bylaw 2021-01 first reading with the intent to hold a public hearing followed by second and third reading at the regular meeting of council on February 22nd, 2021 as per the planning and development matters recommendation. Second, second for that. Councilor Ramage. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, just a second recommendation related to the OCP, just updating the future growth map. This is again, just to bring the two documents in line. So there's a recommendation for first reading of bylaw 2021-02 as well. Okay, uh, motion for that. Councilor C. Make the motion the council give bylaw 2021-02 first reading with the intent to hold a public hearing, followed by a second and third reading at the regular meeting of council on February 22nd, 2021, as per the planning and development manager's recommendation. Seconder for that. Councillor Cooley, any questions with that one? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Hearing. Thank you. The last two items for discussion tonight are discretionary uses. The first is 802 Janison Crescent for a group care home. The administration has received an application for a group care home at 802 Janison Crescent. The, the owner intends to create a group care home for three to four adults with intellectual disabilities. Uh, this use has been advertised in the local paper for one week. Notice has been sent to residents living within 100 meters. And the recommendation from administration tonight is that council approve a group care home for 802 Janison Crescent. Okay, motion please. Uh, Councillor Seed. Uh, make the motion to council approve a group care home located at 802 Janison Crescent as per the planning and development manager's recommendations. Seconder for that. Councillor Peterson, any questions or comments? Councillor Seed. Uh, Manager Toth, I just wanted to confirm that you did receive no uh, concerns or questions from residents within 100 meters, as you said that they had been uh, given notice. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, not even. Uh, we received nothing verbally or in writing. Perfect. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? And from now on, I'm just going to ask all those in favor, if it's unanimous, I won't ask opposed. According to Robert's Rules of Order, I'm supposed to be asking opposed, but it gets confusing when the arms sort of hesitate there. So if I see all arms up, I will just ask all those in favor and then pass the motion. Just want to give a warning for that. So I'll call the question then. All those in favor of this motion? Carried. Uh, the final item for discussion tonight is a discretionary use for a manufacturing plant. The manufacturing plant will manufacture dental implants. Administration received an application for a manufacturing plant to manufacture dental implants at Unit 6, 1210 Industrial Road. 
They'll manufacture a number of different products used in the dental industry. All work will be conducted inside the building. There will be no outside storage of any materials and there are no concern, sorry, concerns with noise as sound levels will be lower than 70 decibels within the building. There's no creation, uh, sorry, no concerns with the creation of dust or any other toxic, toxic or noxious materials being a nuisance to the public or any other building adjacent. In addition, from the question that came up at Committee of the Whole, just related to uh, waste products and if there's any unusual or special requirements in terms of their waste, uh, Planning and Development has confirmed with the applicant that there is nothing unusual in terms of the waste that they will, pr will produce and no special requirements as a result of that. Again, this use was advertised in the local paper for one week, notice sent to residents or property owners within 100 meters. And the recommendation tonight is that council approve a manufacturing plant at number 6, 12, 10 Industrial Avenue. Motion, please. Councillor Tooley. I will make the motion that council approve a manufacturing plant at number 6, uh, yes. dash 12, 10 Industrial Road as per the planning and development manager's recommendation. Seconder, Councillor Seed, any questions or comments? Councillor Seed, Councillor Seed. Just wanted to leave the comment uh, and, and just give uh, thanks to Manager Toth as well uh, regarding the getting the questions answered before they were even uh, presented really. Um, you know, we had some questions on the last discretionary use application and just uh, approving this. I, I think you had all the uh, questions answered uh, ahead of time and I just do appreciate that. So thank you. Appreciate that. And if there's ever anything in the future you'd like to see with any of these discretionary uses, by all means, just let me know. Any other questions or comments? And again, that's good use of the committee of the whole too, where it's presented and chance to reflect. So those questions can be presented. So thank you to everyone with that. And thanks for those comments. Other, any comments or questions? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor? Carrie. Thank you. We will move on to Public Works. Thank you, Worship. I'll be the uh, Public Works and Utilities Manager uh, for now for the, just this one item. Uh, so it's in regards to uh, traffic technical service agreement with the City of Saskatoon. Uh, presently, the, the only company that we can get to supply traffic signal maintenance is a company from Regina which does come with a significant cost for travel time as well as uh, also timing to get the work performed. Uh, as a result, we did uh, contact the city of Saskatoon to see if we could utilize their services and experience, uh, which they have agreed to. But part of the provision of this service, the city, uh, the city of Saskatoon has asked us to enter into an agreement uh, for the services setting out the charges, uh, et cetera, that uh, we would be uh, have to remit if we use those services. Okay, uh, motion please. Councillor Beck. Uh, thank you, Mayor Philipchuk. <clears throat> so I'd like to make the motion that Council approve the Traffic Technical Services Agreement as presented by the City of Saskatoon as per the Public Works and Utilities Manager's recommendation, aka, in this case, Bob Smith. <laughs> Seconder for that. Councillor Ramage. Questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Seed. I, again, just wanted to put out here, I think that this is an excellent uh, representation of thinking ahead, um, looking at something that very easily we could have continued to the company out of Regina, um, you know, because nobody knew any better. So I just really appreciate the fact there's some time and some effort put into uh, reducing the overall cost to the taxpayers in Warman. And uh, that's the kind of forward thinking that just sets us ahead. So I, I do very much appreciate it. Other questions or comments? Councillor Johnson? I know that it was uh, presented earlier that uh, Martinsville had kind of entered into a similar contract. Are the prices comparable to what they're paying as well? Do we know? It's the same contract. Okay, any other questions or comments? And, and I'll, I'll sort of follow what uh, uh, Councillor Seated mentioned that I think these are some of the benefits of P4G that we're seeing too, that we, these things would have never really been talked about sharing of services in these same ways that, uh, that I, I think are now uh, at least an option that are coming forward because 
We're really trying to help support each other in every way possible. And this is a very, you know, very specialized area. So, uh, you know, I, I appreciate these types of things opening up. Any other questions, comments? Okay, I'll call the question then. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. We will move down to, let's see here. We're moving down to council and committee reports. We'll start with my report. Any questions or comments? You can see those great pictures that I was able to get and that's all just with my phone. Uh, uh, our beautiful skyline that we have in Mormon at different times, one's right outside my door, that uh, orange sky. But uh, just seeing all that's happening, uh, so many more meetings. I'm seeing a lot more meetings right now with, uh, with, with talking COVID. We have a regional one and today was a provincial type one and Nothing really new coming out at this point, but I'm, I'm hoping that that opens up some possibilities later on. Uh, I did mention also about the, uh, if you have questions for the bear pit. Now, if you don't know what the bear pit is, it's probably something you want to check, do a little, it's, it's where all the ministers will be there. And it's going to be so different this year with, without it being live. So I'm not sure how uh, all that'll look, but uh, uh, I guess if you have those questions, I, I think, one of our benefits of being a city right now and, and some of the things that we have, we're able to set up some of these meetings with ministers that before would have been very tough as a town, it would have taken a lot more. Uh, so I'm seeing our opportunity to have some of these questions done in a different format than SUMA. And I know SUMA represents all, but uh, it, 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 it may be, if there's that one issue though, that we want the whole province to hear that maybe that's one that we could submit. Uh, you have as a, as a member of council, you can submit that. Be nice, let each other know though, so we're not submitting the same thing, if something like that. Anything that comes out of mind? Okay, we'll move down to uh, Julian's then. If you could turn on your camera, Julian. We've got your report in front of us. Um, is there anything else you wanna add to your report, Julian? Um, I can't think of much else to add. Um, after I wrote it, I was sort of thinking about school sports and like activities and that sort of thing. Um, there's obviously nothing to speak of in that regard. Um, not a lot for group activities at this point. Um, so apart from what I have in there, there's can't really think of much else to add right now. Okay. Well, we'll open it up if anybody else has questions. What about the walking track? How is that being used? Because it's just with, you know, fitness is probably, is, is it still being utilized? I, I think I think it's still being used in like gym class and whatever. Okay. Um, I don't actually have gym, so I haven't had a chance to use it yet. But uh, I think I think it's still being used in class. I'm not positive. I'll have to take a look next time I'm in. Um, if people are just using it when they're there and whatnot, sort of like the the private or like the gym in there, like the 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 weights and whatnot. But uh, that's something I'll have to take a look at and then I'll update you guys on. Okay. Uh, any questions for Julian? Uh, Councilor Beck. All right. Um, uh, you know, certainly um, um, in your report there, Julian, you, you like you certainly mentioned how some of the uh, so, how some of the classes have changed in terms of uh, you know, let's say like the block scheduling, and you also note that the spirit days have continued. I was just wondering, um, you, you, let's say, um, like, is there any difference in in terms of how those are handled in a in a in a uh, COVID nineteen environment um, versus how they might have been done previous? So. Spirit days in the past might have included, well, obviously I said, I sort of talked in there about pep rallies and whatnot, um, how we don't have any of those this year. Spirit days in the past um, usually would have included a pep rally and they were almost fewer and further between in the past. Um, I'm noticing now that we seem to have, or we're having more spirit days and they're more about individual stuff like dressing up and it's, it's sort of, almost like a, a new theme for how you dress up every time. Um, and they're, I'm fairly sure that they have them every week as opposed to every few weeks like they used to. So it's like a, almost to keep morale up you know, more often than before. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Seed. Yeah, uh, Julian, thanks for your report. I just wanted to check, um, how are the students doing at the high school? What's the, the overall kind of, uh, 
um, I guess, theme? Like, are they, are they doing well? I know it's been really difficult with the social distancing and not being able to have, you know, these pep rallies and play sports, uh, that things of that nature, but just in, as a general kind of your observations, are they, are they coping well? Is there more that, uh, you think that we could do for them or what's the, what's your general feeling there? Well, obviously it's tough because all the tables have been taken out of the commons and whatnot. So nobody can really sit together at lunch. Um, or when they're waiting for buses or whatever, it's there's they're sort of missing that common area to to convene in, which is just a product of whatever the situation we're in right now. But um, I don't know. I with sort of speaking from myself and my friends, um, I know we're finding sort of more ways to different ways to keep in touch as opposed to you know sc- screwing around in the field at lunch and whatnot. Um, I can't say there's been much of a change for the worse in anybody. Obviously people find a way to sort of cope with it and whatnot. And uh, I myself have actually also with the classes changing and whatnot, I found it to be almost a good thing. It's helped me out a little bit, just having it, you know, all at once instead of stretching it out over six months. Um, But I mean, yeah, other than that, I think everybody's doing fairly well. Um, If I notice anything though, I'll bring it up again. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Julia. Yeah. Councillor Johnson. I was just going to say, as a teacher and as someone who has been in the building, the kids are amazing at um, washing, sanitizing, wearing their masks and, and kind of helping cheer each other up. But that was one of the things I, I noticed, too, that um, it seems like a little bit more stress just because there's a lot more Uh, There's two classes in a day, but I I think they're doing such a great job of kind of that social distancing. And it is really super hard to try and like we're built for connection, right, as human beings. And uh, but they're honoring what the policies are. And I'm just I'm super proud of you just as uh, a teacher and as a mom and as a counselor and and person. So good job to you guys. Um, and is there anything like mental health wise, are you guys doing okay that way? Um, are there any services that you would like to see? Um, anything that we can do uh, or the community can do to provide uh, maybe a little bit of a pep or something to help you emotionally and mentally with this uh, COVID times? That's a good question. Um, I have, I do think that some people that um, sort of relied on school as like a social time um, might be struggling a little bit more. Um, but at this point, that's something I'll have to pay a little bit closer attention to just because I can't really, it's tough to come up with anything without breaching anything that sort of puts people at risk. You know what I mean? So um, I'll have to do a little bit more deeper thinking into that and then pay attention as to what sort of they're lacking and whatnot. But at this point, I can't really come up with anything for you. Well, any other questions or comments? And again, thanks, Julian. You know, very well presented uh, and, and great comments uh, along the way. I, I know that you have a lot of supports within the building and it's, it's really helping your students accessing those supports too, whether it's the counseling and whether the other things that are there and, and, and there's lots of the 800 numbers and things like that. So, but I, I, I hear a willingness of, it's so tough when you can't have community events because a lot of what we would be able to provide is sometimes a facility to host more people. So, and, that, and those are the things that are tough to do in this situation. So thank you. Uh, we'll move on then, Council Roundtable. We'll start with uh, Councillor Tooley. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Don't really have a whole, whole lot to report from the last, uh, from the last couple of weeks from, from the last council meeting. Uh, the only thing fairly significant that I've been involved with was just the uh, the Warman Library Board meeting, which was last Wednesday. And uh, there's going to be a motion coming forward within the within the library board minutes. Uh, however, I don't believe I see those minutes as part of the agenda package this evening. So, but we will be uh, there. There is going to be a recommendation coming forward from the library board uh, for a new member appointment. And I think I'll probably wait for that until we actually maybe have it in the minutes or until we have the minutes before us to, to talk about that. Um, outside of that, 
things seem to be going pretty well with the library board. Um, they continue on with some, but what they can with programming, although it's been fairly impacted with COVID. And that's about it for me for now. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I think the library board minutes missed it by a day, uh, uh, getting their minutes in. Uh, they missed it by that much. Well, because it was Wednesday night and that one was yeah. due. I, I see that I missed our motion to put uh, my report and uh, Julian's uh, file those. Uh, may I get a motion for those, Councillor Dooley? Yeah, I see I'm talking already. I might as well keep talking. So I'll make a motion that uh, Marin and uh, the Youth Council's reports uh, for January 25th, 2021 be filed as presented. Seconder for that. Councillor Peterson, all those in favor? Carried. And we'll move to uh, Councillor Ramage. Uh, th thank you, Mayor Philip Chuck. Um, some, of this, some of the things uh, I've been looking at over the last couple of weeks is uh, continuing to examine the options for advancing the Augusta Boulevard extension. Uh, the Committee of the Whole, we did receive a, a report from administration that has some recommendations. Um, so it, it's really positive to see this continuing to move forward. Uh, also been looking at the transportation master plan uh, just to better understand some of the technical side of the issues that we're seeing at uh, Clubhouse and First Avenue. So uh, working through a few questions there, nothing to bring forward in, in this meeting, but uh, just trying, trying to see what our options are and, and how we can address some, some of the, the traffic congestion issues, re recognizing that once the Augusta Boulevard extension is constructed, that some of those traffic patterns will change. Uh, outside of that, uh, there is a P4G uh, meeting that, uh, Councillor Beck and uh, Mayor Philip Chuck and I will be attending this week. Uh, looking forward to hearing more about some of the North concept plan and I believe some of the zoning bylaw is on that agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move to Councillor Peterson. Not a whole lot to report, but uh, I did have uh, um, a friend of ours uh, kind of ask, ask a question uh, recently with the uh, um, the recent business that was that was closed um, because of COVID. Um, just wondering if maybe there might not be an opportunity to put out a, a post because their initial reaction was they were quite shocked that COVID was here in Warman, not realizing that there have been cases, you know, kind of in the past and all along. And, and I'm just wondering if there's, you know, some way to, to address that and reassure people that, you know, that, uh, you know, where we're, you know, the city's doing everything we can to keep informed and keep on top of it with our meetings with SAS, SAS Health and, and following protocols within our buildings and, and such. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Peterson. We'll move to uh, Councillor Seed. Thank you, Rachel. Um, yeah, it's been uh, lots going on uh, for myself. Uh, I'm kind of finishing off the end of the month strong, uh, I guess. Uh, we do have the RCMP uh, planning meeting that comes up on the 27th uh, as well tomorrow. Uh, the Legends Golf Course has their annual meeting, so I'll be attending that. Um, all indications for the Legends look fantastic. Uh, very uh, interested to sit down and, and go over the uh, planning with the RCMP for F Division, Martinsville, uh, and Warman. Um, the other thing that's been occupying actually quite a bit of my time uh, that we had discussed very briefly at the committee the whole meeting was uh, some of the regulations and current legislation around uh, ambulatory care uh, or the ambulance service uh, provided out to Warman. Um, I've probably got three or 400 pages of documents um, that I found online and uh, gotten by asking a few questions. Some of them have come from our own uh, city manager with some previous correspondence. Um, I'm going to put together quite a package uh, for council that I'll have available uh, in the next uh, week or so. Um, but I just, just so everybody's aware, uh, I have some very grave concerns regarding uh, the current agreement and structure that's there. And I think it's something that is uh, tremendously important for us to take a look at in very, very short order. Uh, and I'm confident that uh, as a group, we'll be able to find a resolution that will benefit the citizens. So uh, really, that's been my, my big, big focus, but uh, it, it's a doozy. So we'll, we'll get through it. 
Thank you, Councillor Seed. And, and I know some of that is working with the, uh, the province on these and, and uh, letting our local MLA and, and, and that's where actually the conference helps too, because you start to see if this is beyond beyond a warming issue, which then helps helps the movement really happen for those big changes that we're looking for. Absolutely, and I guess I should also clarify, It's a for me, it's a complete fact-finding mission. I'm not contacting anybody with the province or contacting anybody going outside of my chain of command, so to speak, but it's uh, it has been very interesting. Okay. Yeah, and I, and I, you know, some of those things have happened with some of those communications, just, and it's just letting people know the, the challenges. So thank you for that. And uh, just to finish, Councillor Peterson's there too, like Aaron's on here too. So I know we've been doing some communications along the way, but we'll, we'll continue those in all our media forms that we can right now and through the paper. Uh, Councillor Ramage. Oh, oh sorry, uh, where Councillor Johnson. Looking at Councillor. So I've had a fairly quiet uh, month. I have the Prairie uh, Reconciliation um, Regional Meeting uh, next week on Tuesday, I believe, in the morning. Um, I am quite enjoying learning from all of the councillors and administration and everything uh, there is about the inner workings of the city and um, the planning and decision-making that goes into it and the banter and uh, debate. Uh, so it's kind of nice to see the different uh, perspectives and uh, talk. Um, and I don't really have much else to report on my behalf other than I'm excited about the movement for the product care as that is part of uh, my uh, council lead position. So that's, that makes me happy. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Beck. Yes, uh, thank you, Ron. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Felchuk. Yeah, uh, you know, this year, I guess, uh, you know, like, I guess I would just like to give a public shout out there to, uh, you know, to our finance uh, department and also our city manager and, and all of our, uh, our department managers for all of the work that went into uh, to the budget meeting that we had on uh, January 14th. Um, you know, certainly with that there, there's a lot of information to collect and make sure that everybody's on the same page, as well as having that presentable, uh, you know, for our our relatively newly um, you know, like established council. And, uh, you know, this year I would, uh, you know, just certainly like to, you know, uh, thank um, Amanda and Bob and all of our, uh, our department managers just for the work that, that, you know, that they've done just to streamline the process for us and, uh, and really kind of present some, you know, so, you know, some insightful options for us in terms of things to consider for, uh, for the 2021 budget. So I just wanted to, uh, to highlight that. Um, uh, beyond that meeting there, I, I did uh, submit my newsletter, uh, which I think is going to be published here this week and whatnot. So that there is going to be great. Um, as mentioned by uh, Councillor Ramage, uh, uh, um, I do have a P4G meeting uh, coming up. And as we've all been aware, the municipalities of Saskatchewan's conference and AGM is from February 7th to the 10th. So, you know, certainly this year, there's gonna be lots of opportunity on that. Um, in our previous meeting, um, it was, uh, it, you know, like it was asked of me to, uh, you know, to see, um, you know, what there was for opportunities in terms of uh, trying to address the, like the health issues that we have, um, you know, so like the ambulance, uh, you know, portion of things and whatnot. So um, I, I have asked uh, municipalities of Saskatchewan for some direction to see whether or not there's uh, some opportunity with that. Uh, I just uh, forwarded off to, uh, to Mayor Philip Chuck here this afternoon, like the response that I got back. And, um, you know, that there would certainly provide us like an avenue uh, to see if we can certainly uh, pursue that. So um, with this year, you know like a little bit of work was done on that um but you know certainly this year as, as a council um with with the video um uh you know questioning that that would be done this year uh just with it being virtual uh whether or not maybe we should all let's say round table and maybe uh you know uh, submit a, a video question you know let's say on that fact and uh, and and see if our uh, see if our question could be picked there so um you know with this year maybe that's not something um you know gary that i'll you know that i'd ask you know your thoughts on um obviously not necessarily tonight but here you know uh, i think we have till um you know friday of this week uh, to submit that and and, um, you know, maybe maybe decide who our spokesperson for that there might be rather than five different or, you know, you know, say seven different questions going in, um, you know, with this year, if we just had one insightful question, you know, let's say from, from the whole entire city. So, um, you know, so I guess I just throw that out uh, for that aspect. 
Um, and then one final note, and this is for Councillor Seed. So with this year, happy birthday to you. Uh, with this year, too bad you weren't recognized as staff, because if so, you would actually have the day off. So as, as a leader in our community, I'm sorry, there are, there are no days off. So uh, so welcome to the team. <laughs> I just I had to get that. that much, as Thule said, yeah. <laughs> and thanks for that. I, I think we do have a, a short turnaround. If somebody, if there's any other items that people would like to see go forward as far as the bear pit, um, you know, reach out to me in the next day or so I I do have a meeting with the municipal or with the um, municipal affairs minister again I, I had one there as I mentioned in my report and that was dealing with the funding for the second arena but have another one talking about SINP and just just all of that and and their their uh their view of any anything's in that area so but if there's We've reached out to health also, so that's another area. That would be specific to Warman now, and, and we can talk about the details of that as we get closer, but but if there's anything that we want to send in as a, uh, as a question, by all means, uh, I, I think let's get that to me as, as soon as possible, okay? Uh, let's say by, by Wednesday morning, and then we can finalize what that looks like. So if you have any other questions, I think the ambulance one was one that I think came up as a fairly common one, even at the Committee of the Whole. So that may be a good one to have that I think does have provincial impacts along the way. SINP is also in the same way though, the Saskatchewan Immigrants Program that may be just clarification there. Okay, we will move down to correspondence then. Thanks for those comments. Uh, we have the RCMP report and I need a motion please. Councillor Peterson. I'd like to make the motion the, that the RCMP Mayor's Report has been received by Council on January 25th, 2021, and is to be filed as presented. Seconder? Councillor Seed? Questions or comments? Councillor Seed? Uh, just a, a little bit of, a, I guess, some information for some people, but uh, a question as well. Uh, we had discussed previously with uh, the staff sergeant asking if it was possible to extrapolate some of the numbers for Martinsville and or Warman uh, on their own. Um, going forward, I would certainly like to uh, further that a little bit because there was some information provided uh, that I would like to see that separated. Um, just so we have a better understanding of the occurrences and or the uh, information within the city of, uh, of Warman, because I think it's a lot more uh, prudent than understanding necessarily what's happening in Martinsville. Not that we're not interested, but obviously there's a tremendous uh, more bearing on uh, our own community here. So I would like to see that uh, if possible going forward. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. I didn't get that. Okay. Uh, Siri. <laughs> okay, we will move down to accounts. Motion, please. Uh, Councillor Beck. Uh, thank you, Mayor Fellow Chuck. So I would like to uh, make the motion to approve the city counts as presented by checks numbered. 24497 to 24602 for the total amount of $1,261,475.05. And the payroll vouchers numbered 011521 to 011621 in the amount of $68,115.54 for January 25th, 2021. I so move. Secretary for that. Councillor Peterson, any questions or comments? Councillor Seed? Just one little note there. Uh, it was actually just read as 68,000. It should read 86,115.54. Other comments? Okay, all those in favor? Carried. Motion to adjourn? Councillor Tooley. I will uh, make the motion to adjourn the January 25th, 2021 regular meeting of council. Seconder. Councillor Seed. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you.
I think if uh, people want to maybe just hang around for a moment, we'll maybe discuss uh, any any uh, questions we might have. We'll wait.